Challenges and mixed signal design poses to us and uh, other methodologies uh, like the complete transistor level simulation or spike simulation and the post simulation challenges. So, we will be comparing these challenges with the advantage the behavioral model based verification gives us, like the reduced simulation times as a user of the advanced digital verification methodologies. Yep. So, and then we will move on to the <coughs> few of the bugs which were found um, with this uh, methodology and um, from issues with the method and uh, additional solutions that has been tried. Finally, on to the summary. So, um, the analog design has been uh, evolving ever since. Like uh, the need for single chip solutions has integrated a lot of features into a um, complex features into single chips. Like we have been moving from the laptops onto the tablet and the smartphones. Like the device sizes has been shrinking. Uh, which has given us lower latencies and uh, reduced bill of materials. So this in turn uh, has uh, made the designs quite complex and uh, from just a point to point communication like where an AD converter might be just updating a digital register, we are looking at uh, devices which has multiple power domains like the normal mode of operation, low power mode and then the sleep mode. And there are a lot of handshakes between a comparator from your analog block into a, a state machine, your digital. And this again controls in a, a, a power supply like in a low dropout regulator or an SMPS. So these kind of complex handshakes happen between your digital and analog blocks. So um, the solutions which we had looked at were the complete transistor level simulations, the spy simulations. This kind of <coughs> flow, uh, a simple power up of an SOC can take days to simulate. Uh, and other the complex scenarios um, might take impractical simulation times. And the verification and activity can begin only when you are uh, complete analog and the digital designs are up, up to the simulation level. Then the core simulation tools, they also have some restriction like the significant increase in the simulation time and uh, the cost of the license, etc. So what we are looking at is a efficient verification strategy, uh, practical simulation times and um, effective generation of stimulus and um, automated checking like the constraint random stimulus generation and a metrics driven verification environment where we can have log of your results rather than just visual waveforms and your coverage points etc. And we are also looking at identify bugs as early as possible in the design phase uh, like the architecture phase etc. And so that we and, and also we should be able to start the verification while the design has been evolving and also a cost effective solution. So what we do here is um, all the analog blocks in your design are replaced by your behavioral models. So the complete design now can be simulated with a standalone digital simulator like uh, NCC model model sim. And you can code these models and uh, VHDL or VHDL AMS in the behavioral models. Um, 
so here we have an example of a model how uh, have very higher level of abstraction like uh, we check the battery the reference voltages the reference currents and the ground based on the uh, mode of operation whether it is a low power or the high power mode we drive the output out of your regulator so this is a very higher level of abstraction you can the accuracy and the level of abstraction depends on the um, your performance and um, uh, simulation time you can select the level as per the need and as and when uh, as and how the uh, design matures so advantage of uh, with the this kind of behavioral modeling is like you can start the model during the architecture phase itself so that you can address architectural uh, issues in the design and your verification can have a head start apart from this you could have a library of models and which is actually independent of your technology and process so you can just plug and play in your um, verification flow and it has a very good reuse so uh, when it comes to the verification environment uh, we can use your bfms uh, to be able to drive real values in your in your environment and you could also have automated checkers which can actually check your uh, output value for example it could check output voltages at your uh, model and as the real values so these will uh, allow you to have a, a use a methodology based verification environments and um, could uh, use your verification metri metrics to track um, your verification progress so here are a few example uh, defect that have been found with this kind of flow uh, one one of the bug was uh, incorrect power supply for a buffer we didn't have to wait till the netlist uh, were ready to be able to see this defect uh, the analog models were able to uh, simulate the design and um, the buffer which was supposed to be there two power domains one is a normal uh, power domain other is a low battery power domain the buffer which is supposed to be clocking the low battery uh, when when the main battery is remote uh, was actually being uh, using the supply of a higher power domain and the design was getting stuck when the main battery is remote and then uh, one of the clock buffers uh, so the second bug uh, is uh, with respect to clock switching in this design there were two oscillators uh, one is the oc oscillator other is the crystal again there is one is supposed to work when uh, the main battery is removed the rc oscillator and the clock switching was happening in digital while the comparator out output was being driven from your analog block so when the main battery was removed um, and the clock being stopped by the analog and the comparator output and uh, they didn't have enough time for the digital to be able to switch to the the low power block so again the design was getting stuck with this so these two were found quite early in the design phase so and then uh, the other example is uh, between audio block so here you might have n number of signals um, the size of a bus where it might be difficult to trace a bit swap with your waveform simulation so again these interconnections if they are extracted automatically so these kind of simulations actually can be skipped when you go into a transistor level simulation you don't have to uh, try a number of uh, stimulus in your transistor simulations to see a bit swap bit swap so yeah, next is a few of the issues which have been found in this flow and uh, the solutions the integration of blocks uh, should not be manual um, the, uh, they can mask a 
issue which is existing in the schematic or they can reduce new bugs automated automated extraction is necessary to maintain the connectivity from your original design and next point is what is the golden reference to developing the model whether is it the design spec or is it the schematic entry and so the comparisons like when you have developed your behavioral model uh, from your schematic entry you'll be uh, detecting both the ip level bug and the soc level bug only in the simulation but if you the model de development is with respect to a design spec and a comparison is done with your schematic entry you can actually have a head start to your verification while the schematic is being developed and uh, you can find ip level bugs while comparing your model with the schematic and the soc level bugs alone in your simulator so this electrical characteristics are not covered part of this verification so those has to be done at the block level or spice limit spice simulations and um, the timing parameters are also not modeled in the behavioral models as a functionality so these can be verified with your uh, analog uh, transistor level simulations and this flow should be supported by the transistor level simulation uh, for basic scenarios like the power up of your complete device or configuration of uh, one single configuration for each of the blocks involved some blocks involved so the verification points covered here were uh, the mix signal design interface between analog and the digital and interblock connectivity for the analog blocks and the functional behavior of the complete device and the electrical and other timing parameters are taken care of the transistor level simulations questions okay thanks for taking this is uh, my my well, I have a, a question um in your presentation you talked about linking to the e environment spec um did you actually do some functional coverage in the spec man space as well? Can you explain a bit about that? So, this flow allows us to use uh, the verification methodologies and uh, the coverage metrics uh, which are related to, to the pure digital simulations like the functional coverage and the code coverage. Because we simulate and uh, the, we reuse the environment which is basically built. Uh, for a digital environment so we could have cover points even when you uh, generate stimulus for your analog blocks and those can be used to um, track your functional coverage like um, so let's say if you are verifying for a, a regulator you could have um, multiple modes of operation and uh, different voltage configurations. So these are modeled in your uh, cover points uh, in your uh, spectrum environment, and you have a randomized stress bench which can um, generate different values. And you can use those as um, to check the uh, uh, functional cover points for a particular LDO. Thanks, Marty. Any questions from Grenoble? No, no question in Grenoble. Lovely, thank you. We do have a question on the webinar. So there's one question, two questions. Um, 
Your source for the digital verification appears to be the schematics where all the SOC connectivity exists. So at that level, are your digital modules black boxes which you can extract from model-based digital series? So we're just trying to understand the question. So my understanding is that they are all digital uh, the models, they're not black boxes or digital. Black, I mean, digital modules are not considered black boxes here. Uh, they will be simulated as a digital box. I think it is the question is regarding what we can how we consider it only during extraction. So there's a question on uh there's a question on randomization. So give an example what can be randomized for an LDF. Yeah, so uh, similar to the question uh, regarding the functional coverage for an LDO, we could have different power domains like the normal mode, the speed mode, or the low power mode. And your output voltage configuration can be different. So all these register controls can be randomized uh, or uh, LDO and for example if you think about audio audio could have multiple parts the headset the car audio and then the USB so these kind of configurations can be randomized Are there any more questions? Ok Alright one more question. Uh, for clarification, digital engineers can call their RTO and analog box separately, away from any schematics, but your source of duct comes from schematics. If from schematics, then what is the digital core of the schematics? So uh, what we're going to do, Mohammed, is we're going to take your question offline. We'll, we'll, we'll let synopsis uh, begin their presentation. Um, and maybe Jagannath can communicate with you separately. Uh, we don't understand the question.